I'm going to show you a wonderful way to strengthen your core. Strengthen your core the yoga way. Let me show you this diagram. This is what we're going to work on. The core is like, think of it like a tin can. You have a top, you have a bottom, and you have the sides. This is how we're going to uh, talk about the core. The top part is the upper diaphragm that pulls the air in and out. The lower part of the core is a perineum between the anus and genitals at the base of the spine that organizes and protects uh, the pelvis. The sides here of the core is what's called transverse abdominis, the only part of the abdominal muscles that connect to the spine. Very, very important to act as a corset to hold this tin can together. Then this is the spine, and if you'll notice these little marks here, those are multifidus muscles. And multifidus muscles are the muscles that strengthen the spine and stabilize the spine. Very, very important, a very subtle kind of uh, work with multifidus. If you ever have a back problem and you went to someone that know what they were, knew what they were doing, they would work on the multifidus because no matter what position your spine is in, the multifidus will hold you stable. So it means you, uh, you'll be pain free, hopefully. So I'm going to go through this and show you the uh, exercises we're going to do. Let's first start with the upper diaphragm, up here, diaph between the chest and the abdomen, that pulls the air in and, and pushes it out. So bellows breathing is this. It's done with a sense of power, not force now, power. So always start by breathing out. As I breathe out, hear the sound, bellows, it's like a bellows. It's strong on both sides. As I breathe out, the diaphragm goes up. Now as I breathe in, the diaphragm goes down. I breathe out. And I breathe in. And I breathe with sense of power as I breathe in. In Tai Chi, or in the martial arts, they call this packing the chi. And I think just below the navel when I breathe. So there's the work on the diaphragm. So now diaphragm again is that kind of floppy disc here that is maybe the most important part of my breathing. If you've ever been hit in the stomach and you feel like you're going to die, well you've stopped your breathing. And that's exactly what happens. You paralyze the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is most important. So bellows breath. The next thing we're going to work on is the bottom of the core, the perineum. The perineum again is that and it's a pelvic diaphragm, as this is a diaphragm. So it gives with pressure. So the, the uh, perineum kind of adjusts the pressure. There's several things that are very, very important to the core. Number one, if I jumped like this and I didn't have something to kind of give at the base of the spine, we'd have problems inside. So that's what it does. It helps that pressure. But it does more than that. When you pull the perineum up, you'll notice it will activate the transverse abdominis in the back. So in yoga, it's the most important, what they call bandha of all. So here's how you do it. And this is called Svina. The W is really pronounced with a V, Svina. This is a, a kind of a, a buildup to another thing called uh, Mula Bandha. So you do like this, come forward slightly, think of the base of the spine, think of it as very flexible, Inhale and pull it way up. Hold for about five counts. Pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. And you notice how your abdomen kind of tightens and the small of your back tightens. Then you slowly let it go. All right, pull that up again. Pull it up, up as far as you can, as far as you can, as far as you can. Hold it for five counts. One, two, three, four, five. Let it go. One more time. The perineum at the base of the spine, that pelvic diaphragm between the anus and the genitals. All right, one more time. Inhale and pull it up as far as you can pull it up. Up, 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 up. Hold it for five counts. One, two, three, four, five. Wonderful. So what you've done now is you've handled the ends of the core, which is important, extremely important. All right, the next thing we're going to work on is the transverse abdominis. Again, the transverse abdominis is that big abdominal muscle group that winds up connecting to the spine, the only part of the abdomen that does that. 
it's very tricky to get it working. So we're going to have to kind of pay attention here. What happens is why this can get loose and cause big problems is we only think about flattening our stomach and you work on the rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis is that abdominal muscle that moves straight down. That, if you tighten that, this won't activate right here in the back, the transverse abdominis. So this is going to be very tricky. You have to kind of concentrate and focus and relax with it. Relax this as much as you can. We're going to do a breath called Agni Sari from uh, yoga. So you lean forward slightly. Keep your back, your relationship between your base of the spine and top of the head aligned. And we're going to do it by degrees. I want you to breathe out, think the navel in for two counts, and then hold that part. Breathe out, rather, breathe out. Now, the navel is in a bit, hold that, but I, really, but I gather my breath again. Now I breathe out again and go deeper. The navel is now deeper. Now relax the front, relax the front, you should start feeling it in the back. Now third time, breathe out and let that navel go against the spine, very relaxed in the front. And then come up and take a big breath. Now, if you did not feel it in the spine, it's because you tightened this and you focused too hard here. You can't do that. So let's do it one more time and see if we can do it. Everyone do this. Take your hand, massage the belly. Keep that belly soft. This is not this military kind of pull in the stomach thing. Keep the belly soft. Soft, soft, soft. Let's try it one more time now. Now let's get what we're doing. Let me turn this direction. Slightly forward. Now, I'm going to push the navel in as I breathe out. Relax the belly, relax the belly. I'm going to push it in deeper. Now relax the front. Oh, now I felt it very nice contraction there. Let's do it one more time, the third time. Breathe out, think it going against the spine, completely release, and relax the front. Good. If you haven't gotten it, keep working with it. You can get it, okay? So that's extremely, extremely important to have this strapping that holds your core and all your movement, okay? Now I want to talk about the multifidus muscles. These are the most difficult muscles to work with. Come look at the board. This rendering here, again, is these little marks on the spine are multifidus muscles that are on the vertebra themselves. Their function is to stabilize the spine. I don't care what position your spine might be in, it stabilizes it, whether it's here, here, or whatever. And it's probably as the, if you ever have to go to a physical therapist for this, they probably would do exercises to strengthen the multifidus. The key to it is this, just like the transverse abdominus work, you must relax the large muscles. If you let the large muscles dominate, the multifidus muscles will not work, they'll stay lazy. I'm going to have my friend here and compatriot, uh, Pavla, who is a well-known physical uh, uh, massage therapist in this area, who's going to demonstrate the exercises for the multifidus. So Pavla, come in please. And if you get on your back, please. All right, the first one, which is very powerful in this way, once you get it, is what I call the slanted bridge. So you're going to push your navel up. You're going to put her hands on here. So now the only thing supporting her is the back muscles, are the back muscles. But now this is the tricky part. And you've got to take those very large muscles, the one that are closest to the skin, and you've got to relax those. So relax those muscles, relax the, the muscles closest to the skin, the very large back muscles, relax them, let it go. And once you start letting it go now, now visualize on the spine, tiny little muscles on each vertebra starting to work. Now they're starting to get exercise, but you have to relax the large back muscles first. And, and essentially you should hold this for about 30 seconds. And your, your only task is to relax the large muscles, and let the tiny little muscles on the spine do the work. 30 seconds. Good. And you can always do this more than once. So roll out of it slowly when you're through. Wonderful. All right, the second one, and there's many, many exercises for this, but these are two that I like and I think are powerful, is what I call the alternate leg lift. So you get on all fours. 
Now, if you're just starting this exercise, you might just start with, just put, put your left leg out. Put your left leg out, slide it, good. And that, only that, maybe to start. Because really what we want to get to is this, pull that leg back. And by the way, now, now, whenever you lift your leg, never lift it straight up, always straighten it out so the back doesn't grab at it. So this one, you're gonna make that left leg go out, and you're gonna bring the right arm up, the right arm up. You're gonna stack your arms right over the joint, and there it is. And you're gonna hold this for about 15 counts. One, two, three, about a second each count. And then again, what you've gotta do is you've gotta relax those large back muscles so that the small muscles, these muscles, the multifidus, are now working. And if you do that, the promise is no matter what your spine might look like, it's pain-free, and that's a pretty good promise. So come on back down now, bring that down. All right, now you have to do the other side. So stretch the leg, slide it out first, and let it rise, then bring the left arm up. And there's the other option, the other part of this. So again, relax those big muscles. Just imagine someone's massaging that, they're relaxing, and you're encouraging the small muscles to work. Then come back. Good, and then sit back and round your back a bit. Just for relaxation, good, and child pose. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to summarize. Thank you, Pablo. So, let's go, let's go back to this. This is our core. And your core, by the way, has more muscles that come into the pelvis than probably any part of your body. This is where you live physically, right here. And if that's not strong and that's not kept healthy, uh, you're not gonna move well, you're not gonna feel good. So the top of the core is the upper diaphragm, the bottom of the core is the perineum, the lower diaphragm. When we pull it up, the perineum should always be slightly bubbled up. Always slightly bubbled up. You know, just start and feel that. Just kind of bring your perineum up a bit and try to relax with it. If it's up, that's where it should be. It shouldn't be down. That's a weak perineum. Women know this that have a lot of children when they have to do the Kegel exercises. The, the perineum loses its elasticity. So when I say pull the perineum up, this is what it looks like. It goes up as you pull it up. Now, the diaphragm, upper diaphragm is the same thing. When you breathe out the diaphragm, it goes up. It goes up. Okay? And then it relaxes back down. Okay. So these two, the ends of the core, you're breathing. Asphena, pulling it up. Again, upper bridge, the bellows breathing. Our next thing is transverse abdominis. When we worked on that, as you bend forward, you let the navel go in slowly at degrees, relaxing the belly so that the small of the back contracts and strengthens, okay? And again, you've got to relax the opposite muscle group. Then the last part we did was the multifidus, those very tiny little muscles, very, very important for, for back and spinal health. And you, we did the slanted bridge and the alternate leg lift. Again, the essence of this is relaxing the big muscles, relaxing the large muscles to make the small muscles work. Again, there's the yoga way to take care of the core. It's quick, it's fast, and it's terribly efficient.